Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking through certain medications that can cause or speed up or exacerbate hair loss. My name is Fortuna and I'm the founder of It Really Works Vitamins. We're a hair care supplement brand from Great Britain but we we ship worldwide. I just I don't know why, but we all of our customers are abroad. About 20% are here in the UK, 80% are abroad. Most of our customers are in the US and India. So thank you so much, guys. We have been featured in Forbes as the best nutrition innovation 2019 and 18, and we've been in Shortlist magazine as the best hair regrowth product for men but we're also suitable for women which I want to add I just know if no one knows that <laughs> so in today's video I just want to share some of the medications that can cause hair loss so to understand how medication can exacerbate or cause hair loss it's a good idea to understand the hair growth cycle. The growth of hair starts with hair follicles in the fetus. The hair follicles consist of the follicle and the shaft. It's a tunnel-like segment that extends from the epidermis to the dermis and it's a several layer structure with specific functions. The hair shaft is protected by the inner and the outer sheaths of the hair follicle. I just want to give you all of this background and then to, when we talk about the medication you'll understand how medication strips away at hair follicles and causes this type of hair loss. So there are three stages in the hair growth cycle, anagen, catagen and telogen. Hair growth varies from person to person with their age, their gender and if they're genetically predisposed to hair loss, for example with male pattern baldness, which affects two-thirds of the whole male population worldwide. The first phase of hair growth is anagen. In this phase, hair grows at around one centimetre per month. The hair rises from the papilla and can last for about five years. The next phase is catagen. In this phase, the follicle renews itself and this is known as the transitional phase. This stage lasts about two weeks. The hair follicle disintegrates and shrinks and the papilla comes to rest by detaching itself from the nourishing blood supply. Next up is the telogen phase. This is known as the resting or shedding phase. And this is where the follicle remains for in a dormant stage for about one to four months. At any given time around 10 to 15 percent of our hair stays in this phase. So for proper healthy hair growth these three phases need to work in coordination but medication can interfere with the phases of the hair growth cycle. There are two types of hair loss caused by medication. The first is telogen effluvium. This is the most common type of hair loss caused by medication. The hair loss occurs around two to four months after the medication has been taken. The reason for the hair loss is that the medication causes the hair follicles to go into the resting phase or the telogen phase, which results in the early loss of hair. A normal person sheds around 100 to 150 hairs a day, but during telogen effluvium, a person can shed more than 30 to 70% more hairs. The next type of hair loss is anagen effluvium. This type of hair loss occurs when the hair reaches the anagen stage. The major cause of hair loss is that the medication hinders the normal division of the matrix cells that produce new hairs. This is the type of hair loss seen in someone who's undergoing chemotherapy. So let's go through all of the various medications that can cause hair loss. The first one is acne medication. Acne medication that can, contains retinoids can cause hair loss. Isotretinoin is a severe acne treating drug that has side effects on the hair and skin. This drug can cause thinning hair, so it's advised by doctors not to take it beyond the prescribed dosage. This medication is available in under certain brand names, including Absarica, Amnesteem, Myoresin, Sotret. Other medications that can cause hair loss include antibiotics and antifungal drugs. Antibiotics can sometimes deplete hemoglobin and vitamin B, which can eventually lead to hair loss. When the hemoglobin content in our blood 
reduces. This can lead to anemia which kicks off hair loss. Vitamin B is also really important for normal healthy hair growth. So a vitamin B deficiency can eventually lead to hair loss too. Antifungal drugs, for example, voriconazole, have side effects which include hair loss. Other drugs that can cause hair loss include antidepressants, including Cymbalta, Disrel, Effexor, Emsam, Escatamine, Etrophon, Elevil, Endep, Vetsema. These can all cause hair loss, so please do speak to your doctor about these when you've been prescribed them. Birth control tablets can also lead to hair loss. This type of medication can cause hair to shift into the resting or the shedding phase. So it's often advised by your doctor if you have um, a history of hormone related issues to not go for the birth control tablet. Cholesterol controlling drugs can also speed up hair loss. Cholesterol controlling medication, for example, atovastatin and simvastatin are found to cause hair loss. However, this is particularly rare, so please do speak to your doctor who will be able to um, tell you more about the side effects of this medication. Anticonvulsants can also speed up hair loss. Anticonvulsants or epilepsy medication, which are used to control seizure disorders and bipolar disorders, can cause hair loss to a certain extent. Blood pressure medication can also have a side effect of hair loss. Medications like Captopril and Lisinopril are used to treat high blood pressure. It's been found that around 1% of patients taking these medications can experience hair loss so it's important to speak to your doctor. Bipolar medication. Bipolar medication for example lithium and Depakote can lead to hair loss. Lithium can lead to certain thyroid problems that cause hair loss. Medications that treat Parkinson's disease. Research has found that dopamine therapy can lead to hair loss in patients who are being treated for Parkinson's disease. Weight loss medication. Fentamine is a weight loss drug that has been known to cause hair loss. It's an oral tablet or capsule that's been sold under the brand name Adipex P. It's a controlled drug, so you'll need a prescription to start taking this medication. Thyroid medications. The thyroid plays a major role in the growth of new hair. A hormone secreted from the thyroid gland plays an important role in growing your hair. When there's a deficiency of these hormones, it can result in thin, brittle and dry hair and hair loss. Anti-clotting medications, heparin and warfarin, are the most common anticoagulants and it's found that these drugs can cause hair loss. So if you feel that you are experiencing hair loss, it's important to really monitor it, speak to your doctor, understand the side effects of the medication that you're taking and if your doctor explains that yes, hair loss is a side effect, then ask them exactly what you can do. I've created lots of videos about how to treat hair loss. For example, they may say you might like to take, start using minoxidil or the brand name Rogaine, or they might say you might like to start taking supplements or to boost your immune system or lots of other ways of treating hair loss. So please do check out our playlist and most importantly, speak directly to your doctor if you have concerns about hair loss. I've just recently done a video all about how to spot hair loss if this uh, this is something that's happening to you so you might want to start taking pictures of your hairline it's important to do this in the same light because sometimes in natural light or in um, artificial light your hair just looks completely different make sure that your hair is either wet or dry at the same time it's just try and kind of keep everything the same when you are taking pictures of your hair it's really important to do this because sometimes it can just look thin in certain angles and actually you might not be losing hair at all. It's normal to lose around 100 to 150 hairs per day. So try not to get stressed or anxious about hair loss. And also it's important to know that hair grows through three different cycles. So we're, we all naturally go through a shedding phase and that's just the normal part of the hair growth cycle. So speak to your doctor most importantly if you are really concerned about your hair loss. Your doctor's likely to offer you a blood test and this is done to see whether there are any kind of hormonal or nutritional imbalances that they should be aware of and that they can fix for you. Your doctor may also do a hair examination where they pull the hair out at the scalp and or test it just by looking at it to see whether you are experiencing hair loss. You may also have a scalp biopsy where samples of your scalp are taken and examined. 
So in loads of my other previous videos, I share lots of natural ways to encourage normal, healthy hair growth. I'm such a big advocate for using natural essential oils mixed with a carrier oil to massage the scalp. I love natural exfoliant scrubs. I, I just love all the natural things that keep hair healthy. And also I set up my own hair care supplement brand five years ago, just because I believe so passionately about keeping your hair healthy using natural products and not using fillers and additives and not having to take products that aren't suitable for vegans or they aren't kosher, they're not halal. It's like, I don't want to take something that's got gelatin in it. I'm sorry, but I don't. <laughs> it's like, why is that so weird? If you have your own questions about hair loss, please do DM us. We are at it really works vitamins on Instagram. I want everyone to stay safe. We're right now, it looks as if we might be entering a second lockdown here in the UK. I just, I can't wait for this to be over and I can't wait to travel again and see the rest of the world. Guys, it's been a weird video. I hope, guys, wishing you warmth, healthy hair growth, love, and peace wherever you are in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay safe, stay well, speak to your doctor. I love you guys so much. Bye for now.